The Igbo landing of 1803, in which captive Igbo people undertook a mass drowning as refusal of enslavement, is contrasted and compared to the oppressive, dystopic landscape of Transdean, a slum often referred to by its citizens as the Terror Dome. The past of black suffering via enslavement, and the present of black suffering through systemic oppression and racist violence, is connected via the spirits of ancestors. Within the Terror Dome, ancestral slaver turned biker gang leader Jason plans to undertake a vicious racist attack against Spike's gang due to his romantic involvement with a white woman, Jason's ex, Jody. In the heat of the violent eruption, innocent lives are taken, seeds of discord are sown, and the inescapability of suffering leads to all-out resistance. This is Ngozi Onwara's Welcome to the Terror Dome, an undeniably confrontational film capturing the anger of black people under the suffering of systemic racism. Dystopic, nihilist and apocalyptic, Welcome to the Terror Dome is often pessimistic in its portrayal of the inescapability of racist violence and its horrific consequences, but Ngozi Onwara's film also presents optimism in its spiritual connection, suggesting death is not the end, that a new life awaits, both in spiritual rebirth and also in martyrdom, inspiring generations to strive for their liberation. With an intelligent use of music, hip-hop often serves the role as the film's narrator, even Malcolm X soundbites serving both as a nod to sampling, as well as a reinforcement of the film's thematic ideas, as well as the film's devastating relevancy within today's landscape. Welcome to the Terror Dome is also the first feature-length film directed by a black British woman, released within UK cinemas. Ngozi Onwara's Welcome to the Terror Dome has gained critical re-evaluation in recent years due to its underrated trailblazing concepts and distinctly uncompromising nature, predating more recent discussions regarding white privilege by 25 years. Yet many of the film's thematic ideas hold a disturbing relevancy today. Despite its ambitious storytelling, often meshing 90s hip-hop with the conventions of commercial and experimental cinema to craft an engaging and thought-provoking drama, Welcome to the Terror Dome was met with heavy critical backlash, indicating the lack of social awareness from the 90s British film criticism landscape. Eleni Jones highlights the ignorance of the negative reviews of the time for The Guardian, stating that The Daily Telegraph's review called Welcome to the Terror Dome deplorable, both cinematically and in terms of its nihilistic view of the prospects of racial harmony. Farouk Dondi, Channel 4's then multicultural commissioning editor, described it as simply exploitative, perhaps most dismissive though, was the Empire Magazine review, which referred to Onwura as a he throughout and chastised him for misreading the mood of race relations in the more peaceable 90s with a would-be commercial movie. Empire took the review offline, stating that its content absolutely does not align with our values. If the inability to critically comprehend and appreciate Welcome to the Terror Dome on its release demonstrates anything. After all, the 90s was only peaceable to those who weren't being challenged regarding their human rights in the face of racism and homophobia. It is that Welcome to the Terror Dome is a difficult film to process, intentionally so. This is not a film that aims to comfort, but to mirror the concerns regarding systemic racism present within the 90s. Welcome to the Terror Dome quickly grips with its opening images of the Igbo landing mass drowning, oppressive shackles, the branding of a man who provides warning, the belittling of a slaver whose wife shows sympathy to the cruel treatment of the Igbo people, the images of the Igbo people walking into the water, drowning without struggle, knowing spiritual transcendence is their safest path to freedom. These images are presented with a warm hue, an emphasis on a ballad which contains lyrics indicating the deep emotions of longing for home. This opening sequence effortlessly meshes narrative cinema with the experimental, as the drowning sequence is accompanied by soft edits and poetic narration that wouldn't be out of place within a Derek Jarman film. It's captivating, shocking and unshakable. We are confronted with the visual depiction of the need to escape inhuman cruelty from white oppressors, but also the film establishes its otherworldly thematic concept that death isn't the end, and that through death comes rebirth, a connection between the past and present, acknowledging this thematic concept. This is why characters from the opening sequence, Jay 
Jason the Slaver, Jody his pregnant wife, and some of the Shackledebo people reappear later in the film, sometimes sharing the same names as their ancestors. As the film shifts to the dystopic Terradome, the bubbling agitation of inequality, the lack of economic opportunities leads to many resorting to gang culture and drug dealing, further anger stoked by the frequent racist slurs directed at the black citizens of Terradome. The film develops into outright resistance when a young boy, Hector, falls to his death in his attempt to escape from racist gangsters. His mother, Angela, motivated for revenge, goes on a killing spree, killing police officers, gangsters, and anyone who stands in her way. Within Welcome to the Terradome, the final straw, the death of an innocent child, motivates retaliation, the violence allegorical for the pent-up agitation that decades, even centuries of racism, inflicts on people. It's difficult not to empathise with Angela, unable to restrain her devastation any longer. It's why Angela becomes a source of liberating inspiration when she is arrested and executed. She stood up against racist injustice and was punished for it. How are the characters of Terradome not meant to feel antagonised by this? We can understand Angela's actions even more when considering the director Ngozi Omura's own emotions at the time of directing Welcome to the Terradome. I call this my angry film, says its director Ngozi Omura, on the phone from Los Angeles, a gentle Geordie accent unchanged by 12 years in the US. Debates around race are meant to be measured and always have an entry point for white people. I'm not saying that's wrong, I'm just saying I made it because I wasn't in the mood for tempered debate. Considering Ngozi Omwira's anger at the time of filming, Angela's actions could also be personally reflective of Omwira's own rage at a racist world. After all, how are you meant to feel when people frequently degrade and insult you based on the colour of your skin? Adding a personal layer to Welcome to the Terror Dome's complexity. During Hector's funeral, the treatment of Angela serving as a sombre motivation to stand against white violence, the character Black Rad, Hector's father, and one of the film's frequent narrators, expresses resentment towards Jody, who has been beaten by gang leader Jason and will lose her own baby as a result. Black Rad suggests he has no more room for compassion but only burning anger, as if an indication that, while Jody may also be losing her own child like Black Rad and Angela have, her loss isn't the result of centuries of hatred for the colour of her skin. It's as if Ngozi Onwara's film is grappling the concept of white privilege, forcing the viewer to confront it. The loss of a child is devastating and Jody's sorrow and mourning is present but she doesn't share the weight of centuries of racist dehumanisation that is inescapable for the Terror Dome's black citizens. Jodie has the freedom to mourn peacefully, Black Rad and Angela do not. It's an uncomfortable confrontation, but if this film makes the viewer uncomfortable during any of its scenes, it's succeeding in causing the viewer to understand the weight of racist prejudice and the conditions of white privilege. When considering how Welcome to the Terror Dome explores white privilege and resistance to a corrupting systemically oppressive world, it's difficult not to find the film relevant within the present day when considering the detestable perseverance of racism, especially in positions of authority, as well as the resistance to said racist authority often demonstrated via the Black Lives Matter movement. The wider discussions of white privilege, the advantages a white person experiences based on the colour of their skin presented within this film also highlights its importance as these discussions become more commonplace today. Discussing the relevancy of Welcome to the Terror Dome, Peter Bradshaw wrote within his review of the film for The Guardian, stating that the centrist 90s weren't ready for Ngozi Onwara's Welcome to the Terror Dome, a confrontational and experimental futurist thriller, hip-hop dystopia, envisioning a Britain whose bigotries have further metastasized in a lawless, failed state created by the cruelties of the past. This is a movie that resists categorization. In many ways, it feels like political cinema from an earlier age, a rough and ready document in which the Terror Dome is something like Godard's Alphaville or the alternative New York from Lizzie Borden's Born in Flames. But interestingly, Onwara is also engaging with more mainstream commercial cinema and music, aiming to create a film like Escape from New York or Boys in the Hood, a studio movie made with art house resources. At all events, this is a film that wouldn't be pigeonholed. Maybe we've needed a quarter century for its spiky refusal to 
compromise, to be understood. It's a film that speaks more to 2021 than 1995. Maybe Peter Bradshaw is correct when he suggests that we as an audience needed a quarter century to understand this film. The initial reviews of the film on its release seemed more uncomfortable with its uncompromising provocation rather than being able to discuss the film itself and its own merits, especially as Welcome to the Terror Dome feels more relevant than ever, capturing the continuance of racism and the rage that it stokes. As long as there are white power movements adamant on persecuting black voices, and as long as systemic racism remains prevalent, Welcome to the Terror Dome will always remain important. In conclusion, Ngozi Omwara's Welcome to the Terror Dome is an important piece of underrated experimental British cinema, utilising dystopian Afrofuturism, 90s hip-hop lyricism, black rights activism, and personal fury to craft a multi-layered, complex, and confrontational piece of filmmaking which encourages the viewer to grapple with concepts of white privilege and why it is that racist divisions continue to persevere. While an often bleak and pessimistic film, Onwara concludes on on a symbolic optimism. Angela, post-execution, a death by hanging, reminiscent of disturbing images of lynching by white hands, walks the streets and breaks free of her shackles, which is contrasted with the past, the breaking of the Igbo's people's shackles. In spirituality, in the fight against racist injustice, there is freedom, and if your cause inspires those to follow in your footsteps, then, similar to Malcolm X, whose influential quotes make appearances within the film's soundtrack, and similar to Angela, then Death is not the end. A special thank you to my incredible tier Patreon supporter Gil and to my super tier Patreon supporters Constantine Bombelli and at Layla Lu One.